to be absolutely chaotic, ignore all consequences, and just be an asshole for a day? Yeah, me neither. Life is hard enough as it is. But that's because we're people, we have certain expectations to live up to, and we feel empathy to a certain extent. But you know who doesn't? Birds. Yeah, birds. You've seen them. Shitting on everything, making ungodly amounts of noise early in the morning, and... flying. How dare you defy gravity in my presence! Anyway, birds don't care who gets hurt in their rampages for seeds and worms and other bird things. So obviously this concept is ripe for video game adaptation, right? Introducing Untitled Goose Game, where you can be horrible to people and ruin their day with no guilt because you're a goose and geese feel nothing. But contempt. Yes, the entire point of this game is to fuck with people. As a goose. It's inspired, really. Now, this goose is not the sort I'm used to. Personally, I think Canada geese are much more destructive, but hey, maybe that's sequel material. Well, I mean, the devs are Australian, so they've probably never even seen a Canada goose. If only we could all be so lucky. Speaking of the devs, this game was made by House House, an indie game studio comprised of only four people. As for the strange title, or lack of title, I suppose, apparently that was the result of having to come up with a name on short notice, and it stuck. Just as well, such a meme-worthy title probably gained it more attention than the name Asshole Goose Simulator would have. And it needed the push, considering it was going up against a Zelda game. The absolute madman. So, believe it or not, this is a stealth puzzle game. I know, right? Because geese are anything but stealthy. They hang out on the front lawn of the max security prison in my town, blatantly flaunting the fact that they can't be arrested for their crimes. You begin the game by honking your way into existence from a bush. Were you always there? Were you summoned by dark magic? We'll never know, and we're better off for it. You look around until you reach the first... section? Target? Area of annoyance? Well, no matter what you'd call it, this all seems to take place in a very English town. Like, I can hear the Coronation Street theme at the edge of my senses, as though I'm nine years old again, clearly waking up on a Sunday morning, and my mother's put the TV onto the CBC and it's slightly too loud, but I'm still going to pretend I'm sleeping because there's a 50-50 chance I won't have to go to church if I stay in bed long enough and- No. Focus. The Goose Game. The Goose Game. They really went all in on immersing you in the goose mindset. There's a dedicated honk button, a truly genius idea. You can also flap your wings, for intimidation points, probably, and pick up things with your beak. Even, like, really heavy stuff. Demon goose? Hmm. Demon goose. You can't fly, unfortunately, but you can run, which I don't recommend because geese don't control well in fast motion, trust me. Trying to take a sharp turn feels more like drifting. With a goose. I mean, if anyone wants to make a goose racing game... I wouldn't play it, but I'd at least enjoy memes about it. This isn't a race, though. It's a slow, methodical approach to ruining everyone's day. As it turns out, this goose is very well organized, as it has a to-do list of all the things it can do to wreck everyone's shit. This is where the puzzle aspect comes in. You have to figure out how to do all of these things, which can take some creativity, or a lot of waiting around, depending. When you've completed enough tasks, an extra item will be added, and by completing it, you move on to the next area. This final task usually involves someone putting up a no-goose sign of some kind, which I find both insulting as a goose and pointless because, as you all know, there are no rules and I cannot be stopped. I think the most difficult tasks are the ones that require you to find a bunch of stuff and put it in one place. Because the people in this game tend to notice their stuff is missing pretty quickly, and for some reason are psychically aware of its location unless you hide it under a table or something. One of the lesser-known superpowers, I suppose. Over the course of the game, you open up gates, allowing you to come and go from previous areas as you please. By the end of the game, you can go anywhere in town, and there's not a damn thing these people and their signs can do about it. Speaking of the end, the main game lasts about three hours. 
pretty short, right? But not to worry, once the game ends, you're given an extra to-do list that provides some more playtime. Although, you can do these tasks earlier, you just won't know that they're tasks. I guess doing one of those things before you're told to might make you feel accomplished for thinking of such creative ways to be an asshole. These extra tasks usually involve items and people from different areas interacting, so you might have to travel quite a ways to complete them. And some of them just take a long time because, uh, geese are bad at soccer. This is the hardest thing I've ever done in any game ever. This is harder than beating Sans. Okay. Fucking get in there. Before I wrap this up, I want to say this game nailed its aesthetic. The art style is simple and effective, the soundtrack is all soft piano music, which is charming, in a way. And the contrast of seeing a goose ruining everything while such classy music plays does make the game funnier. Like, this could be a peaceful day in an English village, but oh fuck, is that a goose? Overall, I think Untitled Goose Game is silly and fun. And in a world where games seem to be forgetting the importance of fun, that's good enough for me. The creativity here is really impressive. I mean, we've seen them all. Games of all kinds. But you really gotta dig deep into your imagination to come up with Metal Gear Solid, but with an annoying goose. Mind-blowing. I'd say check it out. It's only available on Switch right now, but apparently it'll be coming out on PC in late 2020. If you can wait that long, obviously. Personally, I'll take just about anything at this point to fill the void until New Horizons comes out. <sighs> How many more months? <sighs> yeah, yeah, all right. <sighs> Anyway, if you want to see what's next, subscribe, and the next review will be posted soon. I promise. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.